In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Everyone, welcome to the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I'm Father James Lincoln Held. It's a pleasure to get to celebrate Mass with you this morning. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you. We, glorify you. we, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, <laughs> Heavenly King, O God, <laughs> Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> Only begotten Son, Lord God, <laughs> Lamb of God, <laughs> Son of the <laughs> Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the Spirit of Wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is little sand, and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her. I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said to them among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone, happy Sunday. Uh, the church gives us this weekend a classic story. We've all heard the rich young man and his encounter with Jesus. This guy, probably a big deal in his town, uh, runs up to Jesus, gospel tells us, seeking his advice or his approval before Christ gets on with his journey. Really, though, he approaches Christ with an agenda. Uh, his response to Christ at, at first betrays this about him. He's already tallied up, right, that he's done all the commandments. He knows, he's aware. He's already tallied up that he's, there's nothing against him, commanded in the law, that he's accumulated that accolade. And he kind of like is waiting to impress the teacher with it. So, what he's seeking in this much-talked-about celebrity rabbi from Nazareth is either some secret knowledge only for the special, right, which he's obviously a part of, or a stamp of approval to pad his self-esteem and justify, solidify his reputation. What he gets from Jesus, though, is very unexpected and in fact, leaves the rich man disappointed. Why? Uh, in a commentary on this passage, uh, Erasmo Maricacus, a Trappist monk, uh, says that it's because this young man can only conceive of success in terms of having. Success in whatever that means, more, having more things is a sign of success, of being well off, having more knowledge from others, uh, to be a guru, he cannot conceive success as a belonging. So he approaches Jesus with all these dramatics of rushing up, calling out, stopping him before he leaves town, rushing up, kneeling down, begging him to have attention to him, right? All these dramatics, wanting to get something from Jesus and thus be seen by the crowd around him in one way or another as successful, as on the right path, having something from Jesus. When Christ responds with the proposal to belong, not another thing to check off his accomplishment list, but a belonging to him, the rich man can't stomach it. He goes away sad. Every criteria that he had of being successful, of being in right relationship with God, with reality, with others, is turned upside down. And friends, I would suggest that you and I can often fall into the same trap, the same way of thinking. How many of us conceive a right relationship with others, with God, in terms of checking off the commandments list? I'm patient with my spouse most of the time. I let that one person go ahead of me at the store for the checkout line, so I'm practically a martyr. I say my prayers. I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't done anything, really. Sound familiar? <laughs> and yet, like the rich man, I think that we can all find in that outlook that something's missing. This can't be it. Right? He, he approaches all of his agenda, sure, but 
but at the bottom seeking something more because he gets that this isn't fulfilling. The heart longs for something more than just what I can have, more than what I can grab for myself, store up. And Christ answers that mysterious desire for more in us by proposing not another thing to do, not another accolade to have or a title, but a following, a belonging. Not doing separate tasks and works, but a unity of life where everything is drawn into this belonging, even the things we have to do. Everything is drawn into this following him, brought into a life with his presence. Like the young man and so with us, the Lord moves through the basic fundamental observance of the law. Right, that's first. You know the commandments. Towards a perfection. Uh, the law is necessary. The, the morality is necessary. But it's geared to open us towards a perfection of a relationship with reality and with God, precisely found in being with him, in belonging, living with his presence. That's the more, friends. That's the missing ingredient in front of my, well, I said my prayers, why do I still feel like there's, there's something missing? But it means, to enter into it, it means leaving behind what we've built up for ourselves. We don't inherit eternal life because we did it, but because of all the, the prayer tokens that we've stored up, uh, because of all the patience tokens that we've earned for ourselves. And I think that that way of thinking is actually an obstacle to living a deeply meaningful experience now. Rather, we enter into a new kind of life, eternal life begun even now as something different emerging in history. Even now, through our lived belonging to Jesus, a lived belonging to this one who has appeared and gives himself to me, proposes himself to me as the answer to my heart, as the answer to your hearts. Go sell what you have. Give up on trying to build something for yourself. And then come follow me. This week I invite you to take count um, just of how you approach things. Things like prayer, uh, or even more regular things. Things like approaching your spouse, approaching your chores, approaching the, that task list. Are you going to do something? Or are you going to encounter someone? Am I going to get something tax, tax, uh, finished off and get a token, a grace point? Or am I going to be with one who beckons me to have a true unity in life, not a separation? Everything can be brought into this belonging. Christ, belonging to Christ, the, lived in the companionship of the church, everything can be for us and the life that we are moving towards a destiny, an inheritance, as Christ puts it. But only if we first set ourselves about this belonging to Christ, who appears for us today at this Mass to once again, once again give us strength and recommitting to him, giving ourselves over to him. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of, and earth, of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And invisible. I, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God. God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And life of the world to come. Amen. Amen.
confident in our Father's love for us as made present in the face of Jesus, we now turn to him with all of our needs. That the church embody the word of God and help all believers to know the saving power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That rich nations find new ways to help those in poverty and to respond quickly to the victims of natural disasters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That possessions never become an obstacle to faith, and that those who have taken the vow of poverty enjoy freedom in their choice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this Respect Life Month, let us remember our Blessed Mother Mary and her complete trust in God and her willingness to overcome fear and doubt and say yes to a new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear and answer these petitions if they be in accordance with your will. Help us to seek, recognize, and follow that will as it appears in our daily life. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of this name, for our good and good of all, of all His holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the firstfruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, 
he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Lamb of God, take you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to receive the Holy Eucharist at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. The body of Christ. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Christ. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended.